The bipartisan Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, they voted to sidestep presidential approval for the Keystone Pipeline and say, get out there and build the thing, mandate it. There is no chance on God's green earth that Majority Leader Harry Reid will actually let the bill come up for a vote on the Senate floor. With us now is Chris Faulkner. Uh, he's the CEO of Breitling Energy and is the author of a new book, The Fracking Truth. All right, Chris, welcome to the program. Look, I'm, I'm quite Thanks, prepared Stuart. to say we're not going to build this pipeline. In fact, the Canadians have already said we're going to build a pipeline that goes to the West and send, get, send the oil to China. Would you agree with me on this? Pipeline's not going to happen. Look, I... I, I yeah, no, I, I think we've talked about this before. I am still shocked that the president's been able to make no decision on this thing, yes or no, and stall it out for you know, almost six years now. The reality is, yeah, you talked about it. Oil's going to go to China. The oil's going to go somewhere. The, the dumbest argument people make is, oh, if we can stop the pipeline, we can stop the development of the Canadian oil sands. That's just not the case. Right. But the reality also is, Stuart, is that oil's already come into the U.S. from Canada via truck and rail. So I think that and we all agree the, the safest way to move oil is, is through the pipeline. This pipeline is sure. 700 miles roughly. We've got millions of miles of pipeline in the ground. Yet this thing has become some sort of political platform and it's the most talked about pipeline that doesn't even exist. It's crazy. Yeah, look, I don't think the Keystone pipeline is going to be built, certainly not the next three years. On the other hand, I want to look at fracking. I think that's yep. inevitable. Uh, they're holding it up. They don't want to frack, but I think it's a temporary thing. I think fracking is going to go gung-ho fairly soon, and you're right in the middle of it. Well, you're right. It already is going gung-ho, and it's only you know, places like New York State where we have challenges with the moratorium. But if you think about what fracking has done for this country already, we have 8.5 million barrels of oil production, <coughs> up 20% in one year because of fracking, right? We're now only a million barrels behind Saudi Arabia in oil production because of fracking. We have 100 years worth of natural gas supply. So it's really turned the United States' energy situation around, and it's put us on a global stage where we're looking at things like Iraq situations, Nigeria security concerns, Libya now production pretty much gone away, and here comes the United States at the right time because I think we're embracing a technology that's now allowing us to displace coal and put natural gas in for yeah. transportation, bring manufacturing jobs back. Fracking is allowing for cheap natural gas, and so now jobs and manufacturers coming back to our country. I just think well, it's ridiculous that we basically told Canada, you know, no on the pipeline really? when it's one of our biggest allies. Well, now, wait a second. The, the, in, in Oklahoma recently, a lot of fracking in, the, in Oklahoma, yes. a series of very, very yes. small earthquakes. And the Greens are saying Correct. those earthquakes are because of fracking. What do you make of that? What? Well, the Greens are saying that it, weather change is because of fracking. So, I mean, it's become the scapegoat of all scapegoats. But the reality is we've got to get data in Oklahoma to see, is this from fracking? Is it water injection wells? Was there fracking going near a fault line and we caused slippage up there? All about that has to be looked at. And that, those data points are coming. We've seen similar activity in certain areas of Texas where I live in, in small towns seeing seismic activity. Now, to be obviously frank here this is not you know five and six seven point oh earthquakes are very small but folks have a concern if they've got a concern with their property being damaged or foundation issues we've got to look at that as an industry embrace that up front and go and find a solution look, to this but i i'm always hesitant to start blaming fracking for stuff because oh, sure. everyone look, else does Chris, and, and I, just, I think I, a lot of times it comes out that these are these are something else related to cause the issue i just want to speculate for a second supposing we just okay. got an administration at the states and at the federal level that said, we want to frack. We want to maximize natural gas. We want to maximize oil production. Let's go for it, boys. Get out there and do it. How much could we ramp up domestic oil production in, say, the next five years? Let's give a nice time frame. If we really went gung-ho, how much oil could we get out of the ground in the next five years? Well, I, I, think the, I, that, I think it's a no-brainer. We can get to energy independence. That's 13 million barrels a day. We've got to get to federal lands. We've got to get offshore drilling ramps back up. We've got to get the support But if support we did that, Chris, uh, if we did that, government. Chris, if we did that, if we did all of that, you think that we could produce more than 13 million barrels of oil a day in the United States of America? Could we? Stuart, yeah, Stuart, we raised the production levels in one year by 20% year over, year over last year. So, yeah, I think it's very possible that we could do that. Also, what you're seeing is a trend of efficiency. So our numbers of, of demand is coming down, and those two lines could cross if we got behind this and supported it. Look, 
or we're, we're going to use the oil. We're going to get it from somewhere. I'm thinking we get it from right here, and we support American jobs and our country, and we're already doing this. We've been fracking since 1947, but it seems like since 2010, there's been this huge anti-fracking movement. But the reality is, look at what we've accomplished with all of that going on, and then factor in your speculation that everyone is behind this industry. I think it takes off, and I think we surpass our, our demand numbers very, very quickly. Chris, and just think how big it's going to be when we surpass Saudi Arabia on the way up that chart. <laughs> and now America is now in the driver's seat Happy as days. the biggest oil producer on the planet. Hey, Chris Fulton. Things combined are Chris Fortner, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We come on back again. We want to see this happen. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks, Stuart.